2 and 7, describing the process of photosynthesis and understanding its importance in the conversion of light energy into chemical energy. So the source of light energy, of course, is the sun. And light travels in the form of photons, packets of light energy. And this will be captured by the leaf. And what we're going to see is a conversion of light energy into chemical energy. And that chemical energy will take the form of bonds between carbons and carbons, carbons and hydrogens, carbons and oxygen, and between oxygen and hydrogen. Now, these bonds are formed by a sharing of electrons. And for that sharing to occur, we're going to need some energy, which of course is where the photons come in. So we can think of the chemical bonds as electrons for energy, giving us three different ways to talk about the bonds in the molecules. Now, the, we require carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and this is supplied to the plants in the form of water, H2O, through the root system covering the hydrogen and the oxygen. And of course, this is transpired up through the stem and out to the leaf, and in the leaf, we've got carbon and oxygen being added uh, as it diffuses into the leaf. So that covers carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, the elements involved in photosynthesis. So the water molecules are coming out of the xylem and into the mesophyll space here and make their way up to the main photosynthetic layer, which is the palisade layer. Carbon dioxide forming about 0.03% of the atmosphere is diffusing through the stomatal pores, again up through the mesophyll layer and on up to the palisade layer where photosynthesis mainly occurs. So photosynthesis is mainly occurring in the palisade layer of the leaf right at the top. Now a palisade cell contains many chloroplasts. These are organelles within the cell, there's very many of them, and it's chloroplasts which contain the pigment chlorophyll. And chlorophyll has the ability to absorb light, trap that light, and carry out that conversion into chemical energy, which in fact, in the chlorophyll's case, is the ejection of electrons. And these electrons here are responsible, ultimately, for the formation of the bonds that we described previously. So in this diagram, we have carbon dioxide molecules and water molecules, and we've discussed the need for light energy, the need for chlorophyll, but also we should remember that the palisade cells and inside the chloroplast have enzyme systems, a fairly complex enzyme system, but enzymes are required for the formation of molecules like this. This one here, this is glucose, the formula for which is C6H12O6. And the thing to draw your attention to here are the carbon-oxygen bonds here, the carbon-hydrogen bonds here, oxygen-hydrogen bonds here, carbon-to-carbon -carbon bonds here. Each of these bonds represents energy which has been trapped uh, by chlorophyll from sunlight. But the understanding of our process is when we consider the bigger picture, which is that photosynthesis is the link between 
the producers or the autotrophs, sometimes called producers, and other links in the food chain. Here represented by this elephant, a heterotroph, the elephant cannot photosynthesize. Animals cannot photosynthesize. And so plants and other photosynthetic organisms are the way in which energy is trapped and can then be channeled through food chains to other living systems. And that's the importance of photosynthesis. It's unique to organisms that have chlorophyll.